All right. Hello, everybody. It's me, Michael, and Lucy. Say hello, Lucy. Say hello. Yeah. All right. I like Lucy's shirt and the speech. Got it yesterday. Um, so hello, as you can see, uh, Layla is not here right now. She's actually at work. She should be heading home here probably within like 30 minutes or so. Um, but I figure it's been a few days since, uh, since recording anything. So I'm just gonna kinda just wing it here. Um, I figure since Layla's not here, we can kinda talk about uh, kinda what led to everything being the way it is right now. Like, <laughs> what was the first thing that happened that led to us uh, selling our house, uh, and doing travel assignments together with this uh, with this dog and this, this beautiful beautiful girl. Um, pretty much, I'll, I, I'm not going to go into nitty gritty as far as what happened in New York. I ended up having to sign an NDA while I was there, so I'm not going to you know just just because just to be on the safe side. Uh, but I will kind of talk to what led up to it. So this one over here, she was born in February, and um, and then obviously as everybody knows. Uh, COVID kind of just kind of came out at full force. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, COVID started lingering around and by like March, it was like, oh snap, things are starting to get serious. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know, um, I have worked full time doing contract and agency work for the past, I would say two and a half, three years or something like that. Um, what that means is I work for a bunch of different agencies, um, you know, and I work between 20 different units essentially and it's all throughout Salt Lake County. Um, yeah, Salt Lake County, I think some in Utah County, no, mostly Salt Lake County. Uh, and pretty much beginning of each month, it's like, hey, um, we got some open shifts here, here, and here. Where do you want to work? And so it, it's been really, really nice. I mean, it's, it was difficult at first, uh, but you know, it's a matter of, you know, you just kind of go wherever the shifts are. I'm able to have full control of my schedule, which is really, really nice. Um, and you know, I pretty much, in, a, in any given month, I, I go between five different facilities or units. Um, with that being said, COVID happened, started, and at first it was like, uh, yeah, you know, this is her new thing. This is her new thing. She just says, dad, 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 dad. I don't know, she's trying to communicate something. Either way, all right, I, I apologize. Um, here, play with, play with these. You want those? All right. Um, so in March, uh, February, I guess, they started implementing new, new procedures and new um, things where it's like, all right, everybody has to wear masks. Okay, you know, and then it was like, just the, the patients, and then it's like, just the staff. And then it's like, you know, and then by March, it was like, they started implementing the six foot rule. And then, well, we're closing down the dining rooms. Everybody has to eat in their room. And then it's like, next thing you know, no visitors allowed anywhere. And it's like, at this point, I mean, I was like, man, this stuff isn't that serious. It's like the flu, you know? You know, out of sight, out of mind, you know, don't really notice it. And um, either way, it just started getting worse and worse. And I started noticing a trend with, uh, with my particular job was there was like a constant worry about, hey, if I work at a facility where somebody has a COVID, uh, you know, somebody is COVID positive, what's going to happen? If I'm working there that day, am I gonna get sick? You know, cause nobody, like I didn't know, like what, nobody really knew what the procedure was. And then it's like, next thing you know, people started getting sick in the facilities. And if you worked at any of these facilities, you were pretty much blacklisted for two weeks on any other unit, any other facility. And I kid you not, very beginning of April, you know, I took a lot of time off when, when Lucy was born. And uh, you know, I started going back to work middle of March. You know, I pick up the occasional shift here and there throughout February and beginning of March. Um, and then it's like, okay, I got to go back to work. You know, I got a, you know, I got mortgage. I got, I got bills. You know, got insurance. You know, the whole shebang. And um, which we call it. Uh, then all of a sudden, April, April kind of hit, and I noticed a lot of my shifts were starting to get canceled. Either that, or they would have places where they're COVID positive. It's like, yeah, I can pick up a shift there. You know, I can pick up two shifts in a week. 
but then there's no guarantee I'm gonna get any more. And then once I step foot into that facility, it's game over. I can't work anywhere else for two weeks. And at this point, you know, kind of stressing out, you know, because I mean, you got, I got, I got to provide for my family, you know, I got, you know, we had a lot of bills from this one, you know, she was in the NICU, Layla wound up in the hospital a week after, you know, and I took a lot of time off. We, you know, it was, babies are expensive. I mean, that's just how it is, I guess. Um, and so I was at one facility, um, one of the Avalon facilities. And this was probably like whew, April 10th, I would say, April 9th, April 10th, somewhere around there. And at this point, I am stressing. I am stressing about, about everything. I'm like, I'm like, there's no shifts. I can't go anywhere at this point, you know? And uh, one of the nurses I was working with, she's like, hey, I'm going to New York. Aren't you from there? I was like, yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, go in there, COVID, COVID stuff. And I knew she was a new nurse, and she's only had experience like in uh, rehabs and long-term care. And, um, and I knew what they needed in New York was more ICU and med surge experience. And so I was like, I was like, man, I would love to do that, but I don't really have experience in that setting. I mean, I have experience doing uh, LTACs, uh, Benson Trakes, long-term, psych, and everything. Like, that's kind of like my, my forte. Um, and, uh, she was like, oh, they're taking anybody, like shit is going down. I was like, really? And I, then I kind of like started looking at the news and I was like, oh shit, like this is serious. Cause I mean, I don't have cable TV. The only, th the only way I really get my news is through NPR, you know? And even then it's like this whole thing, I was like, ah, it's just a bunch of BS anyway. And so I was just like, I'll just listen to music instead or I'll just, I don't, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like it's fine, it'll blow over like this. It, this happens every year. Like that was seriously my mindset at the time. And you know, I was just, you know, just ignorant of the whole thing. And uh, at this point, I'm like, I, you know, I asked her, like, uh, I was like, what, what's the procedure? She goes, oh, you just go on like one of the Facebook groups here. I'll give you a couple contact info and whatever else. And um, I, ca I called up a couple different recruiters. Um, one of them was actually through uh, the company I'm going, I'm with right now, Aya Healthcare, and um, it didn't work out. It just, it wasn't gonna, it, it just didn't work out uh, at that time. But you know, I started, I, I uh, begun the, the beginning. I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. Beginnings of a good relationship with them. I met, I, you know, I talked to my current recruiter now, um, and it was just kind of like, listen, uh, you know, I kind of found somebody else for right now, but the next one I will let you know. And either way, I went with this other company, which I'm not going to mention because I, they kind of put a sour taste in my mouth. Um, but either way, I caught, you know, got some info, called them up, and they were like, yep. I was like, listen, I don't have the experience. They're like, we don't care. We need people. I'm like, all right, cool. What do you guys need? And they just needed, uh, they just needed proof that I was a nurse and proof that I had a TB test. That was it. I was like, you know that my CPR is expiring in like a month, right? They're like, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, they're putting everything on hold. I was like, do you guys need anything else? And they're like, yeah, can you come out here in two days? I was like, I can't. I can't come out there in two days. They're like, four days. We need you here in four days. Sure enough, you know, I'm like, okay. Started getting everything done. I called up Layla. I called up my grandma. I was like, hey, listen, I'm going to New York. I'm going there. I signed a two-week contract. Um, and that's it. So... Um, that's what kind of got me there, and the whole mindset of, of this whole thing was, well, this will pay the bills, you know, and I always wanted to do the travel nursing thing. I really, really did. I remember, uh, like, when I first met Layla, that was one of the first things I told her, you know, amongst many things, was, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm, I'm going to be a travel nurse, I'm going to be working out in LA one day, and I want to, and... I didn't say it when I first met her, but we have talked about many, many times doing a travel nursing couples thing. We wanted to specifically go to New York City and be travel nurses there, or at least, you know, the, the big cities. You know, we like the big cities. And, um, and I never even really thought about this until uh, my first nursing job. I had uh, a nurse, Amy, Amy Coleman. And um, Amy Coleman, God, she, she she was my nurse my first day on the floor. And uh, she literally handed me the keys, because I worked there as a CNA for years. She handed me the keys and said, all right, I'm gonna go get a coffee, you can start on the meds. And I was like, what? And she goes, 
Oops, sorry. She goes, she goes, yeah, I'm gonna go get a coffee. What do you want? And I was like, uh, you know, and I ordered whatever I ordered. And um, she's like, all right, cool. I was like, wait, what about all this? She's like, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know what you're doing. So that was my training. It was, and I think I only had like two training days, but everybody kind of just like, they were like, oh, he knows what he's doing. And then they were like, hey, we need you to work on the floor. No training. I was like, okay. So I essentially started working on the floor with no training. You know, I had my schooling and stuff, but it was like, okay. And, um, yeah, so that was, so Amy's the one that said, you should do travel nursing, you know, that's what I did for years. And uh, you would love it. You love to you love to go to new places and everything. You get to meet new people and you get to just be in a new place every couple months. And, um, and so I tried going that route about, after being a nurse for about a year, I went from working vents and trachs uh, to behavioral. And um, I kind of figured, the, beha the behavioral hospital that I worked, the psych hospital essentially is what it is, um, that I worked at, I didn't enjoy the, the politics with it. There is, um, you know, there's, there is a dark side to healthcare, which I'm not going to go into on this video, but there is, you know, there's the good and the bad and everything, and it's just a matter of, you know, you got to got to find a place that makes you happy and you agree with everything that that goes on behind closed doors you get along with the doctors and the other staff and um, when I started working there um, I started work that's when I started doing agency as a part-time gig uh, just kind of picking up a shift here and there oh you know we want to go out of town for a week boom we'll pick up an extra shift oh we need to buy uh, a new vacuum cleaner just pick up an extra shift that pays for it and um, and then I was like well let me just see about this travel gig and I called up a recruiter from from a different company, and he was like, he goes, listen, I wanna I wanna be able to hire you, but you need experience. You need to find a specialty, you know. And I was like, well, I'm cool with vents and trachs, you know. Like and I'm like, and I have a few months of behavioral experience. He goes, he goes, listen, it's just not enough. You need more. <coughs> and um, and I was like, all right, cool. So, you know, it. I ended up getting experience doing agency work, which still involved a lot of vents and trachs and behavioral patients, like straight up like behavioral, like uh, dementia, you know, acute psych and everything, long-term psych. And, um, you know, but I still love, you know, working vents and trachs, long-term stuff. And um, yeah, so I did that for a few years and um,